Welcome to Deep Lizard. My name is Chris. In this episode, we're going to see how we can reset the weights inside a PyTorch network. Without further ado, let's get started. So when it comes to resetting weights in a PyTorch network, there are a couple of different ways that we can go about doing it. So we're going to look at several ways here. Actually, we have six on the list. We're going to start by looking at an individual layer. How can we reset the weight in an individual layer? And we're going to work our way to doing all work our way down to doing all the weights in a given network. So let's flip over to Jupyter Notebook now, and we will actually look at how to do this in code. So we're going to begin here with an individual layer, and we're going to look at how can we reset the weight if we're only working with one single layer. But before we do that, I want to just scroll up here and kind of look at what we were doing previously in the course and why we are now looking at resetting the weights of a network. And the reason that we want to reset the, the weights of our network is because we are testing multiple networks inside this network's dictionary. And we're doing this inside of our run loop here. Now, each time we do a run for a given network, we're accessing the network from the dictionary. If we have more than one parameter set that we're testing for a given network, then we need to make sure that these networks or, or this particular network's weights are reset each time we do a new training run. So let's go ahead and see how we can make this work for an individual layer. We'll begin here by creating a layer to work with, and we'll just be cre creating a linear layer that is the most basic linear layer that we can do which is one that takes in two inputs and produces a single output. Now, with all of our examples, what we're going to be doing is using this manual seed method inside of Torch to set the seed for the random number generator. Now, this value that we pass in is used to set the seed for the random number, number generator, and I'm just choosing 50. The number's arbitrary. As long as you choose the same one each time you call this method, then everything is going to work appropriately. Now we have to do this to make sure that whenever the layers are initialized randomly, that the same seed is used to generate the random numbers that ultimately become the weights. So we'll go ahead and we'll create this layer and we'll just check here what the state of the weights are for this layer. And we can see here that we have a tensor, a weight tensor containing two values. These values are important because when we change these values and we reset them, we want to make sure that they indeed are equal to this right here. So then we'll know that we have successfully achieved a reset. So now in order to do this test, we need to actually update these weights and we could just access them directly and update them, but we're going to do it neural network style and we're going to use an optimizer and a backwards pass to get these weights to be updated. So let's just see how we can do that. We're going to do that in this cell by first creating an input that we can pass to this layer. Now we're just going to create a random tensor here that has two features or two elements, and that's going to give us this tensor T, and then we're going to pass it to the layer. We're going to get an output, and then on the output, we're going to call this backward method, which is going to calculate our gradients, and then we can do a step with the optimizer, but first, before we do that, we need to pass in the layers parameters to the optimizer and then we can call step on the optimizer and what that's going to do is that's going to update the weights in our layer so let's run both of these and we can see now if we check our weights that indeed they are different they are slightly different than before and that's because we just stepped with the optimizer using a small learning rate or now that we've changed our weights, we're ready to reset them to what they were before. So in order to do that, we need to first set our manual seed, and then we can simply call this method here, reset parameters on the layer. All right, so we have ran that cell, and now let's check our layer weight. We can see here that indeed we are back to our original values. So I wanna flip over to deeplizard.com really quickly, and I just want to scroll down here. I have the source code for this reset parameters method. And this is, we can see, coming from the linear.py linear file in the PyTorch source code version 1.7.0. 
And what I want to point out here about this method is that whenever we call it, we are actually resetting the weight matrix or the weight tensor of the layer. And we're also resetting the, the bias. And so this, this video or this lesson is about resetting network weights. And so we're calling this reset parameters because really whenever we talk about the weights, um, we really want to just reset all of the parameters in the model. So we want to also reset the bias and essentially any learnable parameter that exists in the model, we want to reset that. And so for PyTorch, we don't, we don't have a method called reset weights. We have the more general term reset parameters. And then, so that's what we can see here in this particular method that it is handling the bias and the weight tensors. So let's hop back over now to Jupyter Notebook and then go to our, well, hop back over to Jupyter Notebook and then go to our next example. So now that we did an individual layer, we're gonna now do an individual layer inside a network. So this is gonna be a, a very similar, except that we're gonna be working with the network instead of the layer directly. So just as before, we're gonna to need to set our manual seed and we're gonna continue using 50 throughout this um, lesson. And what we're gonna do is create the exact same layer here, but this time we're going to wrap it inside of a sequential model. And so this is going to be a model that has one layer, uh, the same layer that we worked with before. So we're calling this network, and then we can access this layer by indexing into the network. Since we have one, we get at the first index, and we can see here we have one linear layer, which takes in two features and outputs one. So now let's just go ahead and as before, we can check the weights are indeed the same values as we had in the other example. And then we can come down here and we're just gonna run through the same routine. Now, the only difference here is that whenever we create our, our tensor to pass in, we're passing it to the network this time, not the layer, but we know that under the hood, that tensor is getting passed to the layer. We call backward, everything's the same, except here when we create the optimizer, we're doing the network's parameters instead of the layer parameters. And then of course, we can check the weights. You can see again that indeed they are different because we have stepped with our optimizer. And then as before, we just call reset parameters on the layer, only this time we're accessing the layer indirectly by indexing into the network. Okay, then we can check here and we can see that we are back to our original weights. All right, so that's the first two methods, which is an, an individual layer and then an individual layer inside of a network. Now let's look or talk briefly about how we would do a subset of layers inside of a network. And basically the story here is that we're going to use the same method that we just used above and we would target each layer individually. So we could create a subset of layers by just targeting each one individually, putting them into a list, and then iterating over that list to reset the parameters of each layer in the list. So now let's not think about a subset, but let's think about the entire set of weights inside of a network. And we're gonna do that layer by layer. And so in this case, we're going to create a network just like we did before. We're gonna have one, one layer and we're gonna wrap that into a sequential model. So let's go ahead and run these cells. We check, and actually these aren't the values we need to Set the manual seed here, torch.manual seed 50. Okay, and now we have the weights that we expected. And then we, oh yeah, that's right. So I actually wanted to start with different weights here. So we're gonna keep this. And so now we have different weights and we wanna reset to get back to the original ones that we know we get when we have the seed set. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run this for loop we're gonna iterate over all the layers in the network. And so the way this works in PyTorch is, we don't really think about layers, we think about modules. So all layers and networks are modules, and then to build networks, we compose modules. One important thing to remember is that a single PyTorch network can be composed or can be made up of other PyTorch networks. So when we call network.children, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us all of the modules that exist inside our network which in this case is one, one module, which is gonna be a linear layer. So then we're gonna go over each one of these modules, iterate over them, calling reset parameters. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can see we get the values that we expect for the weights because they were reset to these uh, values. 
So now we're going to complicate our network slightly. We're going to see why this becomes problematic. So to complicate our network, all we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to create another sequential model and we're going to add just softmax at the end. So let's go to run the cell. And now we can see that we have two layers, a linear and a softmax. And remember from a Py, from PyTorch's standpoint, these are modules. So this is a PyTorch a linear module and a softmax module. And now we're going to set the seed and we're going to do this in a try uh, block because we're going to get an exception. But uh, what we're going to do is the same exact uh, iteration as before. We're going to say for each module in the network, it's children, we're going to reset the parameters. So let's run this and then see what happens. So it says here softmax has no attribute reset parameters. And so what this is illustrating to us is that it's not as simple as just to iterate over the children, the child modules, and then reset the parameters. And this is because child modules may not have any parameters. So you might be thinking, well, we could introduce some logic inside of the for loop here. And yes, that is correct. We could put some more logic in here checking, but this can become problematic and error prone. So we're not gonna really consider this as an option, although, you can do that if you want, but I don't think it's the best option. And the reason is, is because this is just one simple example and the networks can get a, a lot more complicated. We can have a, a lot of nested modules. And so in here, just to even access the modules, we would need to be doing some type of uh, recursion. And then uh, more and more logic potentially has to be introduced to check to see which type of module we're dealing with. So instead of doing that, we're going to look at two more methods, one which is using a snapshot and the other one which is reinitialization. And I think both of these are superior to introducing any logic here. So we're gonna look first at how we can use a snapshot. Now the snapshot is gonna be the most flexible way that we can reset the parameters in any PyTorch module or any PyTorch network. And this is because when we create a snapshot, we can create it at any point we want. So we don't have to necessarily reset to just the starting point. We could train for a little while and create a snapshot and then we could reset to that particular uh, point in time. It's flexible for that reason. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we do it. So just so that we start off in the same state, we're gonna set the seed. We're gonna check the, the uh, weight for this layer. We have everything's the same as before. So now what we do in order to create a snapshot is we're gonna use this save method from within Torch. And we're just gonna pass in our network's state dict. So this is our state dictionary that has all of our network's state, which is which the state for our network is our parameters. Then the next thing we do is we pass in a file name. This is the downside to this particular method is that it saves to disk. So it's gonna save to disk and we're just specifying the file path. So we're saying the current directory, we're gonna call this thing network.pt. Now .pt is the uh, common file extension for PyTorch uh, models. And that just stands for PyTorch. All right, so, well, let's just run this. And then we will pass our network parameters to an optimizer and step, and we'll check the weight. Here we can see that these weights are slightly different as we expect. And then now here's how we reset. We just access the network and we're gonna call this load state dict method and then we're gonna use this load function uh, from Torch, and we're just gonna specify the path to our snapshot, to our, to our model that's on disk. We run that, everything came in successfully, and we check the weights, and we can see that indeed we are back to our original weights. And so this is a great way to reset, especially if you wanna reset to a specific point in time or a specific point in the training process. At any time, we can save the entire state of the network, which is all the parameters, and then we can just load those back in. So the last and final method is just gonna be network reinitialization. So let's take a look at this. This one is the most common and easiest way, but it's often overlooked because we just don't typically think, oh, let me just reinitialize my network. But that's all this method entails. So let's go ahead and just make sure that everything works here. This whole example is the same. We can see that we've got different weights. And then to reinitialize, we just call the same um, constructors as before. So here we call this constructor and this constructor. And then we're gonna get 
as long as we use this uh, manual C function, we're going to get the network. We're going to get a network that has the same weights as um, as, orig as the original weights. All right, so we run this, and then we check the weights, and we get the original. So this method is going to be the most common method that we want to use most of the time, and it's it's going to be the most efficient. So the way that this one is better than the pr than the previous uh, snapshot method is that it's more efficient. We don't have to write to disk. And so the, I guess the key thing to take away here is that as long as the network has the same architecture and we set the seed to with the same uh, seed value, then we're gonna get a network that's starting out at the same state. Like all the parameters are gonna be the same. And I think the reason that this one is overlooked is just because we have an instance, we're passing the instance around and we think that we need to keep working with that specific instance if we wanna, if we wanna start over. But no, we, if we wanna start over, then we just need to set the seed and then reinitialize the network and we'll start over from the exact same place as we began uh, originally.